Hi, I'm Mr. Sonic Nevitz, and this is my unboxing and overview for my January and part of my February pre-orders. That's why the box is so big, and I have a second one like right here. So here we go. Now this box I'm pretty worried about because it's pretty banged up. Um, and I can see part of the... Oh, yeah. They, these were just shoved in here, man. Come on. Oh, good God. This is not good. Not good at all. Holy crap. This wasn't even like level. This is for sure going to be some damaged stuff in here. Oh, man. Jeez. All right. Come on. Oh, man. Well, so far, so good. Oh, yeah, okay, corner ding on that one. Not too terrible, though. This is what I'm worried about. This is for sure smashed. Oh, it's only a small corner ding. Wow, that's surprising. Wow, that actually was not nearly as bad as I thought it was going to be. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> Uh-oh, heavier side over here. Let's see. Wow, that's a little corner ding there. But, yep. Looks okay. This should be light enough to move now. Yep, there we go. Trade's okay in the list. This is okay, I think. Wow, that's actually really surprising. Uh oh, yep, these are the ones I'm worried. Oh, look how heavy these are. Yep, so that's a dinged corner there. But otherwise, it looks okay. And then here we go here. Oh man, that's. Oh, dang. That's, that's part of the artwork. I can't tell. And then, yeah, it's a... Oh, that has two dinged corners. And the dust jacket's torn. Great. Okay. And then let me get the second box. <laughs> so, two out of... Or actually, really just the one out of... That many books isn't too bad. And then this one looks like it's packed way better. Yeah, this one looks like it's packed much better. Which is funny because like the trades are in here. It's like, dang dude, the packaging that my hardcovers need to get this kind of packaging. But to be fair, I can I can fix hardcovers a lot easier. So I guess that makes sense. Yeah, these are these are all fine. What it looks like. Ooh, slight ding there. But yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hooray. Okay, here we go. Time to get the list. Just somewhere here. Here it is. Okay. <laughs> yeah, a lot of books. Okay, here we go. Come on. So, the first thing is right here. It's this milestone compendium. This is the the property that DC bought, like, way back. 
This is like Static Shock and all those guys. Icon and the rest of them. A lot of Dwayne McDuffie's stuff. This is like his universe. Yeah, basically, they, they had this come out because they're like redoing them. Like Milestone Reborn or whatever in the DC universe. And uh, they're all not very good. But this is pretty sick. Yeah, so it even says the Big Bang on the back, referencing, of course, Static Shocks, how he got his powers. Ooh, let me see. What the heck? Is that on the... Oh, it's right here. So this is a Silisco book, which is actually pretty surprising. It doesn't feel like a Silisco book. It actually feels a lot... I mean, it feels like a lot of their other compendiums, because I have... What other one do I have? Oh, I have the Starman one right here. That one's pretty good. It feels just like the Starman one, so that's pretty good, pretty nice. Um, we'll put it right there. Yeah. All right. Number two. Here's one of the ones I'm worried about. My Excalibur Omnibus Volume Two. This one has Horner Ding right here, but other than that, it actually looks okay. So we're about to see. Here we go. Actually, I need room so I can like actually open this thing. So let's see. If I move this here. There we go. And I'll put this over there. Now I have room. All right, here we go. Come on. So I've heard, again, I'm not expecting too much from the binding on all these Omnis, so we shall see. All right. It's looking good, though. Yeah, so for sure that corner's hit. Not that bad, though, and I can buff that out. I'm more annoyed again, always with the dust jacket, because those are harder to fix. But Sorry about that, my lamp was making a weird noise, so I went and checked it out. But okay, anyways, let's... So, there's the front and the back. There's your side. Oh, yep. Great, this corner's hit right there. That's awesome. It didn't actually look that way on the dust jacket. Yeah, the dust jacket looks way not as bad as the corner. That's annoying. Oh well. I don't really want to go through the process of like getting a return and all that. Because it took me like two months to get some of these, so they're probably like all gone. If I were to get a return. And it's something I can't really like fix, you know? It's still annoying though. Oh yeah. There's your dust jacket. So I'll set this aside. And this aside. Oh wait, no, what am I doing? Sorry, it's been a long time since I did one of these. <laughs> Let's check the binding. Whoa, a lot of dust. How the, how the heck is there dust inside the book? That was weird. So it is a Emac offset book. So it's a turkey book. These are hit and miss. Like the Wolverine one I have is actually kind of decent. How's the paper quality? Yeah, pretty thin paper. It's definitely see-through. Yeah. If you have like pure white pages, you can see to the other side but anything else you'll probably be okay or actually on this green I can see through to the other side so that's kind of disappointing but IMAC uses really thin paper here we go yeah I wasn't expecting much there you go again this is like still white borders on a lot of pages so the gutter roll doesn't eliminate art a ton but there is a bit there's one right there where it eats up those word bubbles on the on this side right here so yeah i'm just most disappointed about that corner ding oh well i can buff it out a little bit but uh, anyways where's my list aha there we go all right
Next is under here somewhere. Spider-Man Life Story, the hardcover. There we go. Also, apologies for the garage. I don't control that. There we go. Ooh. So that looks okay. Ooh, I love the way they did this hardcover, though. Look at that. That looks nice. Oh, it's not printed too well, though. That's annoying. That's like nothing on the person I bought it, or the company I bought it from. So if you can see in there, it's not fully leveled. The pages aren't fully leveled with the book. So that's why, like when I held it the first time, it felt kind of off. Yeah, like you can see it there, how it's much higher on this side than this side. So like the pages aren't even flush. Wow, this is a. Uh, this is actually not very good build wise. Wow. It's a Sheridan Vers Versailles, Kentucky book. Never heard of them before. So they're skimping again on the quality, which is disappointing because like full color, Mark Bagley art, or like full size like the oversized Mark Bagley art for the. Uh, Spider-Man Life Story is awesome, but holy gutter roll, it eats a lot of it. Oh yeah, was there a, I wonder if there's a, a bonus story in here. Is the, the original trade I have just says one through six. This has the annual, that's why. Oh, so yeah, I'd never read the annual before. That's cool. But yeah, this is a, oh, look. So here, you can even see it on this. So see that blue border? And here it's a little bit more cut off. This isn't even printed, like, this isn't even, uh, like, printed correctly. This is a really, really bad construction job by um, that Kentucky company. This is bad. Like, it looks great, but feeling it, like, even I love how this feels, but... Man, this is a really, really bad construction job on this thing. This feels like a really bad, like, DC hardcover. You know, like, some of them from the, like, the New 52 era. Like, some of them are really bad. Uh, and then, this, the, the dust jacket is the same as the trade. But, and, uh, yeah, other than the ding corner, it's, like, fine that way. But, man, that's rough. What's next? Uh, all right, here we go. One of the big boys, Green Arrow, Volume Two, Longbow Hunters. This one has a ding corner, I think, right there and right there. But what I'm worried about is the binding. Here we go. Come on, all right. Doesn't want to work for me there. Ooh, this has a matte dust jacket, though. I'm sad I put covers on for these kind of dust jackets because I like them so much. But, gotta protect them. Ugh. Oh, snap. Hoo-hoo. Here we go. Yeah, that's a super dinged corner. Dang. Er, it's actually not that bad. Oh, it is torn a little bit, actually. That's annoying. And then this side is a little ding, but not too bad. So let's grab this out of here first. Oof. That does not feel sturdy, but we'll see. There's your dust jacket. Matches the first volume in design. It's pretty nice. Um, here we go on the hardcover. Looks pretty cool. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Who made this one? 
This is Interglobe, who DC loves to use. I do like the feel of Interglobe's paper. And it's thicker than like the, the Marvel paper, the Imac stuff. Yeah, this is uh, not going to want to give it all. Oh, oh, actually, it's giving a little bit. Wow. Whoa, it's coming up. <laughs> I'm so surprised. Ugh. Yo, look at that eye. That's awesome. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, what the heck? Uh-oh. Coming up a little too much. That's the backing board. So it's not too terrible that it's undone like that, but I just got to be careful. But yeah, look at that. Look at that binding on this. I, You know what? I was wrong. Nice. That is sick. Just wish this wasn't dinged right here. But again, I can fix those. And yeah, the biggest part is these aren't dinged because those are way harder to fix, like on the Excalibur Omnibus. Nice. All right. What's next? Uh, uh oh. My potentially most damaged one. So here we go. This. For sure is a tear in the dust jacket, which is the most annoying thing. I do love the cover of the dust jacket though. It's very, very nice. <gasps> Ooh, that noise is not nice on the ears. That squeak. All right, boom, there you go. Oh yeah, this, this, uh, that corner's blasted. Yeah, oh. One moment, my bad, something I had to go take care of, but we're good, okay. Oh yeah, this, um, what was I, gonna, I was saying, oh, this, so this dust jacket was actually not wrapped on the book correctly, which is actually what I think caused the tear. Is it even torn? It's not quite, so it's not quite torn. It's a little scratched, but other than that, but yeah, if you can see like this bend here, how it bends inward or outward, that's not on the, the shipper's fault or anything. That's like in the plastic, it was like not aligned correctly when they pressed it. So that's annoying. But oh yeah, anyways, really cool dust jacket though. I love that cover. So we're going to set these aside. And then, yeah, so there's the standard cover there. DM cover I have there. Um, this is actually fine here. Not, It's a little dinged, but not nearly as bad as the Excalibur one. Up there is fine. These corners are fine. It's just these two down here. Neither of them are. Oh, this one is torn. So that's torn too. That's cool. And that's actually really hit. Ooh, that's gonna be annoying to press out. But anyways, let's check the binding. Come on, man. Come on. The red inner flaps. So this is a R.R. Donnelly book. So that could be anything because they are so everywhere. So who actually knows? How to draw Daredevil in six easy steps. That's so funny. Oh, I remember those books. How to draw marvels. Ooh, look at that. Hear that glue break. Hey, Filmoto. Come on. Oh, listen to those pages go. Oh man, so this is like a climate thing, but like see that separation there? That's the glue not wanting to come apart with these pages. They're like really wavy and they kind of stick to each other, but you can press those out. But yeah, binding wise, 
nothing like the Green Arrow you just saw. Disappointing with R.R. Donnelly because they used to make really good stuff. You can stretch it out still. Like you get, I can see it can give a little bit, but. Yep, and then of course I gotta fix the things on it. But... All right, what is next? Uh oh, hey, to the trades right here. I love how they do these trades over. They put them in these plastic things. It's really nice. Because, yeah. So basically, you use the trades to support each other, so none, none of them get damaged, which is pretty cool. There we go. There we go. And I believe it's the middle one. Yep. So, Symbiote Spider-Man, Crossroads. It's pretty... It's just a continuation of, like, the... Like, adventures he had while he was in the black suit. So it's pretty cool. I believe this feels just like a... Uh, yep, Silisco book. Silisco on small trades is, is whatever. Like, you can kind of see how it curves. The spine curves down. Because it's not totally printed level. But on something this small, not a super big deal. Um, I also love how just mar small Marvel trades feel. It's nice. Um... Where should I put you? Put you right here. All right. All right. So then we have this. Legion of Superheroes Before the Darkness, Volume 2. Oh, and if I never said that Daredevil book was Daredevil by Charles Soule. It's the, it's the, when he's back in the black suit run. It's the one right before um, the current this is a Darsky run. Oh, ooh, this this dust jacket feels awesome, and it has texture on it for the the characters on the front. That's really cool. Yeah, but this is a classic DC standard size hardcover. So here's the full dust jacket, looking sick. I love the design of the Legion. And then. The hardcover is what they usually do. It's like a full splash page of something, or like a zoomed-in version of some art. And let's see. This is an Interglobe book. Uh, let's see, paper-wise. It's not too thin, so it's, it's, it's matte paper, which is what DC likes to do. It's not as thin as the, the, uh, the Turkey book, but not as thick as like their Omnis. Like the Green Arrow one was. And yeah, <laughs> look at that. But again, in this era, the white borders, you don't lose too much. So it's not too, like, annoying. But, alright. Nice. And this leads up, yeah, this Volume 2 goes right up against the Great Darkness Saga hardcover. So it's pretty cool. There you go. Alright. Alright. Oh, yep, here we go, right here. Batman, No Man's Land, Volume 1. And Volume 2 has been solicited, and it's later this year. So, Road to No Man's Land and No Man's Land Volumes 1 and 2 in Omni. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool. And I think, actually, they include an issue in here that's not in the trades. Or it's in Volume 2, one of the two. I will check the... I mean, as always, I'll post the, in the description, I'll post the contents of all these books so you can check. And if you don't know, in the Indica, which is where I'm reading where they're published, like how they're published and like who they're by, not like DC or Marvel, but like who actually made the book, that's where I'm look, learning, or looking at that information. Yeah, and this, this is like perfectly, okay, this was in that other package, so, or no, or was this in the other, yeah, it was in the smaller package, so it's like completely fine. Yeah, this looks... Very nice. Pretty, like, just a cityscape in blue. Also, like, what is kind of annoying is they're using, like, the Batman text from, like, the New 52 run. Like, the way they write Batman. I guess for synergy, but it's kind of weird. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's all blue. 
All right, here we go. <clears throat> Dollars to Donuts is an Interglow book, because it sure feels like one. Uh, yep. Nice. Yeah, so Batman Harley Quinn is, I think, is the missing issue that's not in the trades. That's in this omnibus, so that's pretty cool. Ooh. Yeah, I really like Interglobe's paper for the Omnis, though. If only they could combine it with, like, excellent binding. I mean, Green Arrow was good, so we'll see on this one. Yeah, no. Er, yeah. So this is what Interglobe books normally look like, which is why I was so surprised by Green Arrow. That's what they normally look like. Ah, <sighs> dang. Still, though, I can kind of stretch it out. I don't really stretch on my Omnis because I'm like not too like annoyed with binding wise. It's just kind of annoying. Plus, you read them enough, they'll do it naturally. Anyways, that's the Batman. Let's get a new stack right here. Another big one. Ooh, this might be the biggest Omni I have in this order. This is another one I'm worried about damage wise. The Books of Magic, Volume 2. Look at that thing. Jesus. And Volume 3 has been solicited, too. We don't have contents yet, but it's coming out this year. All right. Ooh, yeah. That corner's hit. Dang! Oh, man, there's a, there's a scratch in the dust jacket. Dang. Looks like one of the corners of the other book hit this one. That feels bad. The corners aren't hit it though. Of this at least. Alright. There's your really cool looking dust jacket. Following the same design as volume one. Yeah, no, oh, kind of rugged up there, but I can maybe press that out a little bit. <laughs> Here we go. There's Timothy Hunter, and I, some girl in the back. I haven't read it yet, so don't know. Oh, yeah, so something I immediately noticed. That's not good. So if you can see this, it kind of dips in on there. This one is, like, already beveled, so this spine has been hit, so that's awesome. Yeah. That's not great for the health of the spine, but here we go. Interglow book. Pages are pretty good. So here we go. This thing is so massive. Goodness. This is so big. Like, I think this is the biggest omnibus I have now. Ah, ah, ah. You giving a little bit? Maybe. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, I doesn't want to give that way. So it's, it's giving a tiny bit. Ugh. There you go. There's a slight bend in the spine. Or in the the eye but yeah not much also binding wise it's or let me check the up there yeah it's all right it just what happens if it can get hit yeah but it's okay oh big book though man yeah if you don't know i put uh book shoes under all my omnibus so the pages don't sag and ruin the spine and that's why because Look at the size of that thing. Whew. All right. Hey. Back to paperbacks. The Hawkeye Epic. Avenging Archer. I don't know why I got this. Because I actually have the small trade. Like, that's his first appearances. And it's pretty funny. Um, I don't know. I just like, whatever. It's an epic. I like Hawkeye. I love that costume. Plus, it has some... Um, like right before the West Coast Avengers stuff. So it's pretty cool. 
Oh, geez. It's a thin book because they've been making their epics thinner and thinner. Yeah, Salisco. Man, yeah, this is like, so this is a $40 epic. It normally would be like to about like out here with the th with thickness, but yeah. As long as you're careful with them, though, they're okay. Let's check paper-wise. Yeah, really thin paper. Doesn't actually have as much see-through as I thought it would, though. That's nice. Yeah, like even on this like pure white page, I can't really see through to the other side. Like very slightly. So, nice. Put it right there. Mm. Ooh. Here's one I was waiting for. Flash by Jeff Johns, Volume 3. These are the, the remixes of these Omnis because they came out a while ago, three volumes, and then they released one and two like different maps, like different issues. Um, they're not different issues, but like different, uh, like more issues in two and three. And that way they could put more issues that weren't in volume three originally into this volume three. What sucks is it's still missing the, um, the flash one half issue. I think he wrote that sets up rogue war. So I still have my volume five of the trade because of that, because that has the issue. All right, here we go. Francis Manipal cover. If you read the New 52 Flash, you'd recognize him. That's Andy Kubert on the back. Pretty nice. Yeah, same design on the spine that fits all the others. I kind of wish he wasn't running. I, I think on the other two, he's not running. Yeah, he's just standing there. So, kind of wish it still stuck with that, but it's fine. Um, Let's see. Really cool cover. I like that. Or a really cool backing thing little ding here which is annoying and then small ding there too which i figured when i like i, I opened it uh the corners here are fine it's going to be an interglobe book let's see it is an interglobe book yep man if they just could get their binding sorted out i'd love these omnis i love the paper like yeah this paper is sick they just need to get their binding sorted out and i'd really really like this company making these omnibus. Whew. Whew. Come on. Oh, dang. Oversized Ethan Van Skyver art. Nice. Oh, hey. Not awful, but like a solid like or it's better in the back here than it is in the front but yeah through the back oh no it's starting to bend in the front a little bit not too not too terrible like not good but not like the last book so yeah god this is so many oh, i'm only two-thirds of the way done uh oh yep that is right here the Ecstatics, The Complete Collection, Volume 2. I actually know where I can get the omnibus of this, but I'd have to pay full price for it, and I don't want to. So I just did these these Complete Collections, because there's only one more, you know, for the three volumes. And I'm not a super, like, massive fan of uh, Mike Allred's art. Like, I I don't think the oversized, like, would help it. Because I, I really don't like his art that much. So, like, I can deal with it being standard-sized. But man, ugh. This is also the... One of the first books I have where they had the price increase. So this is $45 base. And, um, oh, little blue lines up there. That's annoying. It's a Lisco book, but, you know, it doesn't feel like a $45 book. Because <laughs> they keep making it thinner and thinner, by the pages at least. That's why the book's so thin. Because it actually has a lot of, a lot of issues in it, but... Yeah, it has six through so ecstatic six through twenty wolverine dupe one two and x-men unlimited number 41 so that's what 15 17 18 issues in it and it's this thin i don't buy it but yeah uh but yeah so just volume three and i'll have all three of those yeah volume one i think i might have done volume one on no did i do it on this because I, I did get it from an in-stock order it might have done a video and I like had it in the order. It's way better built than volume two, but volume two is not terrible. Uh oh, something I was looking forward to for a long time. Where are you? 
And this was the one that was sticking out on my my box, and I'm I'm surprised it's not damaged. All Star Superman oversized hardcover. I'm pretty sure the binding on this is not great, but I don't care because I want Frank Quietly's art in oversized, and I don't want the absolute. So I don't like absolutes. Okay, that's not true. I don't like the shelf space absolutes take up. So. So yeah, this is like the volume, like the same as the volume one hardcover, and this is like the trade art or cover for the trade, the complete collection. But yeah, there's the full thing, looking awesome. Um, ooh, I like what they chose for the the hardcover. That's nice. Yeah, so just to compare it to that Spider-Man I bought, see how flush this is. Like this is what hardcover is supposed to look like on the the thing. Like I'm surprised how bad that Spider-Man one is. It's 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 a wolf to me. This is an integral book again. Yeah, it's a uh, binding wise, just like your standard hardcover. Nothing crazy, not awesome. Um, but what's nice is quietly puts a bunch of borders around his stuff, so it doesn't really eat a bunch. Plus, I had the standard hardcovers anyways. And those are not great binding wise, so it's like might as well combine them into one and get oversized if I'm going to still read it that way. This is one of my favorite Superman stories. It's very good. There we go. Oh yeah. This was what got announced right after I bought the trade that includes these issues, so yay on me. Scott Steiner's Justice League Volume 3, the end of his run. So, yep, matches design wise, matches the other two. I love it. Oh, what the heck? I hope that's not on the hardcover. On the back here. Nope, fine. So, this has like this weird ding, but it's only on the dust jacket, not on the book. So that's okay with me. Because dust jackets I cover anyway, then I can fix them, sort of. But it's paper, which I care way less about compared to the book itself. Here we go. Oh, what am I doing? It's matte again, though, in matte paper. Um, Interglobe book again. And this is like pound for pound the same as the uh, All Star Superman. Not much to say there. It is matte paper though. All Star Superman's is not matte. I don't think. Yep. Glossy paper, matte paper. Watch out. Let's put that one aside. We're almost done. Uh, yep, two left. So this is what I've been really looking forward to. Gen 13, starting over the deluxe edition. Because I really like Gen 13, and tracking down their trades is a pain in my butt, so this is way easier. Come on. I actually have, like, a lot of the original issues of this. But yeah. Ooh. Yeah. This is, uh, J. Scott Campbell before he changed his art style. So yep, there's your full cover. Looks real nice. Set that right there. Ooh, that wrap around is sick. Look at that. Hey, there's Pit. If you've heard Invincible, you'll know Pit. This is an interglobe book. Oh, dude, I haven't gotten one of these. Oh no, I got the. Uh, Got the Spider-Man one wrong, because that's a new company that messed that one up. But I've been pretty well on guessing these so far. So, yep. Same as always. But, again, I'm not looking for anything crazy with this. It's not an omnibus, so. Oh, small ding there. Nothing crazy. 
and the last. Batman, Key Crusader, Volume 6. One more. One more. Or wait, that might be Dark Detective. I think it's Dark Detective that we need two more. Volume 6 and Volume 7. And then we're up to Nightfall. All post-Crisis Batman from Crisis to Nightfall. Finally. Holy, this book is thin. I'm so annoyed too because they could have like done this in like fewer volumes with just more more issues and like increased the price by $10 and I wouldn't have minded. Oh, this is an LSC book. Holy crap. Yep, matte paper. Uh, it even looks different from a lot of them. Uh, Thin-ish, but not so see-through, which is nice. Yep, volume six. So I believe this is up to Nightfall though, Key Crusader. Because Key Crusader has, I think, more either more issues per book or like a lot of the, the, the tie-ins for other crossovers and stuff. We're in like Dark Detective. But yeah, pretty good on the Batman there. It looks all good. So yeah, that was my massive two-month delayed orders. Sadly, a lot to fix. And, you know, I would, like, pitch a fit over the refunds and stuff, but it's just too annoying right now. So, anyways, thank you for watching.